Hello ladies and gentlemen. Hello, welcome to our new transmission. Let me know, can you hear me? I'm trying new method of recording the uh, video, so I'm not sure everything will work. So please let me know, can you hear me and can you see me properly? Can someone reply to on the chat? Can you hear me? Anyone? So why are you not responding on the chat? Okay, uh, so without further ado, let's get starting. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Next lecture, the eighth one, considering generalized linear models. Uh, we will, uh, regarding the split in edited uh, uh, lecture, I will split it, but I had uh, a lot of children on my head this uh, week, so I wasn't able to f do it properly. I have it prepared partially, I will probably finish it today. So it will be split and today's one also will be split into as many parts as needed to make it more bearable. I'm aiming for parts about 30 minutes each, unless it won't be possible. So other people outside those two that are listening now will be able to follow it more closely. Uh, I will please uh, uh, again ask you to ans uh, ask and answer, uh, ask any questions or answer my questions on the uh, YouTube live chat which is being recorded and can be used later uh, for discussion, not, on, uh, not necessarily on Teams. Okay, so generally uh, what are generalized linear models? This is the topic that probably most of you heard before. Uh, we've did linear regression before, so we did linear models. So what are generalized linear models? General linear models are, as a sense, extension of that concept and uh, are generally very similar to linear models, which are very nice because we, they are very simple and we not why we, would we want anything else? We know that, of course, linear models have limited application, but we can use functions of predictors, so we are still linear in the parameters. And uh, because of Taylor expansion, we know that the model can be expressed, everything can be expressed uh, linearly. And so generally, we have uh, simple computation. This computation requires, especially on the basic statistical level, requires not only simple matrix computations. When we are doing it in STAN, it's also not that possibly difficult uh, to understand. We have this our design matrix, which will do some stuff with that, and we have everything. Uh, okay, normal distributions, stuff like that. So this is relatively okay. We know what's going on. Uh, but there might be some reasons that we really want to change our models and move away from the 
comfortable uh, embrace of Gaussian distributions and which comes for example with uh, necessity of uh, robustness and compensating for outliers and for that we did a simple example with the uh, student t distribution in the Newcombs experiments when we shown that uh, using distribution that allows for more extreme values using student distribution which is more heavy tailed we were able to compensate for outliers and move closer to the real value and uh, be useful for that and we still be able to use the uh, linear representation of mean so we have the our location parameter we had we just had the uh, distribution uh, spread was is controlled by different parameters this region is much more heavy tailed but generally we are still interested in the expected value uh, or the mean and this mean this location of the distribution is represented as a linear combination of predictors so relatively again simple idea uh, we want to represent something as a linear value and this is relatively again uncomplicated unfortunately we lose the advantages of uh, Gaussians in the aspect of computation so we are not able to solve problems using uh, computation in the sense of uh, uh, computation in the sense of uh, uh, classical statistics in case of student t regression then we need to support ourselves with Monte Carlo uh, computation especially if we do not have the availability of the parameter of degrees of freedom so the control so the parameter that controls the number of the, uh, the the thickness of our tails uh, so continuing uh, uh, this point it's still relatively simple but requires more advanced computation but this is everything simple if our data are real now and so and by real numbers we that we I understand that we have the possibility of getting continuous number uh, continuous scale of parameters so we can have fractions or not fractions or complicated uh, any, any number between uh, uh, any uh, number that lies on the real real axis however there are issues issues come from the fact that se uh, sometimes we have distribution that are integer values and this is a problem because um, we have the problem uh, we have the issue that we have something that for example takes zero or one binary result classification problem what, uh, something belongs to a class or not or uh, we can have uh, generally more advanced sequence of binary results so number of successes uh, in, and in either in order or not and again this is not a real number or it's not a sequence of real numbers so this is a problem or even in uh, for the case number of in general integers because for example we are interested in a number of failures in a given time or number of successes in a given time and for that we have let's say Poisson distribution that gives us the values of integers and these are not real value numbers so we cannot use the uh, normal student distribution but we we need to use some kind of different distribution and even if we have real numbers those uh, numbers can be constrained for example they can be constrained by zero so they are uh, constrained with like for example exponential distribution which is often used for uh, representation of waiting times or times until uh, until a certain event happens uh, they are given by the uh, they are of course because it's representation of time they are cannot be less than zero so again we these zero constraint distributions are a problematic situation because we are not uh, uh, we cannot represent them using normal uh, normal or uh, other uh, otherwise the same situation with gamma distribution which is a distribution also is considered from zero or log normal distribution that's is very important because for it's very important for economical reasons 
that certain parameters are logarithmically distributed. For example, earnings. Earnings are not uh, uh, normally distributed, but the order of magnitude, so the logarithm of the earnings of people is normally distributed. So generally we have situations where there is constraint, normal distribution doesn't work and we have a problem. And because normal model that would and again, why we want that? Because we have some predictors and we want to predict some values. We want to create a model. And this and we are hit by a constraint happening here that our model is not uh, our model is uh, takes only value should takes only values other on integers or on uh, for example positive numbers or negative numbers they don't have the negative uh, they have the representation for uh, negative values so this is the uh, the issue that we cannot use linear regression to create even a local model because it will easily generate our nonsense results and nonsense results are as we can expect not nothing good so let's start with integers and uh, because generally it's a harder issue so maybe we can just switch the likelihood of our distribution and um, because well theta is a parameter of Bernoulli distribution yes or no and we could just use the alpha plus beta xi and the problem is that no we can't we can't because we have constraints in the distribution definition and those constraints are relatively imp important. For example, in Bernoulli distribution, we have probability. Probability is a value between 0 and 1. If we put a linear predictor there, we get generally put an uh, unbounded number from minus to plus infinity. So, problem. And those problems are uh, generally prevalent to multiple situations. For Wherever your parameter is a probability, either binomial or Bernoulli, you have constraint from 0 to 1. For Poisson distribution, so the probability of numbers successes, you have probability, uh, or you have constraints of positivity of the parameters. And as I said, alpha plus beta xi, so the linear combination of parameters, is generally unbounded from minus and plus infinity. So it is problematic. And we cannot just constrain it. We cannot just constrain it because each, in case of analytical computation, is deaf. In case of statistical computation, we have received a problematic distribution distribution with a box constraint, which is very difficult to explore in any reasonable method, because getting values from that distribution is extremely problematic. Also, it would make our priors difficult, st all stuff would be wrong. So, we cannot constrain those distribution because sampling won't be possible. At least not efficiently. So what? Well, link functions. Link functions, it's the place where generalized, in generalized uh, model comes. Because the idea is to link the linear model with the distribution of our interest. So if we have some kind of distribution dependent on the parameter, we can define a link function that says that this function of this parameter can be linearly represented with predictors. So as you can see here. So if we have that situation, this means that our distribution is related through to the linear combination predictor of predictors to the, uh, the function of uh, f to minus uh, 1. So the inverse of the link function represents the uh, uh, takes real values of linear combination of predictors and transforms them into the uh, constrained interval that we are interested. So it might be 0 infinity, it might be 0, 1, it might be something else that is justified by this distribution because the concept is general. Only one that we want a function that should have be invertible 
So it has to be continuous, monotonous, uh, stuff like that. And it needs to transfer this linear combination, these real numbers into our interval. So from interval AB, F gets you the values from uh, real numbers. And because the inverse exists, the inverse function transforms our linear combination predictors into a constraint number. Why this is better? Because it looks like very complicated situation. Because it is solvable. It is solvable by using appropriate uh, represent, uh, uh, sampling uh, pro uh, procedures. You can sample it and get results. And otherwise, uh, there will be issue. Are there any questions about the idea? Answer either your teams on, on uh, chat. Everything is clear? From the silence compi uh, combined with delays, I understand that is this um, that is clear. So let's go to how it works in the uh, in our situation. So let's get some examples. The most maybe the most the mo not most but very simple one is then a lo exponential or a logarithmic link. In Poisson distribution or in other distributions when lab, when parameter has to be a positive, we can ensure that by exponentiating the linear combination of predictors. So we take our real number from here and we take exponent of it. So negative values will be squeezed close to zero and positive values will go up to infinity. So in case of Poisson distribution, we will have a logarithmic link function. So we assume that the logarithm of lambda e is represented by a linear combination of predictors. So this is the logarithmic link of Poisson distribution, which is generally not that hard. We've accounted that before when we've discussed the analysis of the uh, cancer treatments. At least uh, this was our first uh, initial representation that we discussed, which was very, very simple. Okay, so this is the, the simplest case. The most famous one and most uh, most present in literature or in use is the logit link. Logit that is using logar log so-called logistic regression. Because in very situations we have a probability of uh, problem. We want to have an assignment, for example, classification, or just predicting the value that we are interested in. So it will be either something will happen or not. So to get that, we need to get a parameter from 0 to 1. Generally, uh, we can do that by using so-called logit function. Logit function is a link function that transforms again uh, the 0, 1 interval into the real numbers. As we can see here, uh, it can be represented this way. Logarithmic uh, numbers from 0, 1, which are we always positive. Uh, at 0, it will be 0. At 1, it will be, uh, this number will be approaching infinity. Uh, taking a logarithm from it will get us the uh, uh, will get us the, the entire real axis. So our Bernoulli distribution can be represented with a logit fu link function to get the log logit of theta i is the uh, linear combination of predictors. And in case of uh, inverse, uh, inversion, it is even simpler because you can analytically invert logit functions and you can get that theta i here is just a quotient of exponent of alpha plus beta x, uh, xi divided by 1 plus exponent of alpha beta xi. So uh, generally this, now, uh, t, uh, again, is a, you can easily see that this number is constrained to 0 and 1 interval. And that makes 
this entire situation relatively easy. So Logitlink is very uh, very popular because it's the base of the most uh, popular or the simplest classifier that's been used, maybe not, not uh, entirely correctly, which is the logistic regression. So the prediction of value of probability between 0 and 1 using such situation. Okay, and different function that is also used is probit. Probit uh, leads uh, the so-called prob uh, probit regression, which is very similar to the logit one. The probit regression is uh, different. Is also assign a function, assign a function that maps from zero one to uh, minus plus infinity, or from otherwise from minus plus infinity to zero one. And in this case, this function. Uh, the function that is being used to, to map from reals to constraints is the cumulative distribution of a normal distribution. So, uh, this uh, the such cumulative distribution function is, well, it's known. We do not have an analytical formula for that. This is given by some called error function. But that's not really important because it can be well, well, rather well approximated. And it can be used for uh, creating such mapping. Sorry. In such case, the inverse of this cumulative distribution function is our link function. So, inverse is a link function, and theta is expressed using the theta, uh, the uh, phi function, so the cumulative distribution function of the real number. As again, we remember, real uh, normal distribution maps reals to the probabilities between zero and one. So it's defined for all real numbers. Uh, and uh, this is very similar to log logistic regression, but it has some difference. The main difference that we have here is that the, um, of course, computationally it's more difficult, but uh, the most difference is in details, because logistic regression, uh, logis uh, log logit function assigns to uh, are actually inverse of logit, logit functions uh, assigns non-zero or non-one values to larger number uh, larger numbers or uh, values of uh, linear combination of predictors because in case of uh, probit you have details behaving like x to minus t square so the farther, uh, far, uh, the larger the value, the faster the function uh, vanishes to zero. In case of uh, logit function, such situation behaves slower because it, there is no square. There is just the value of uh, t to uh, uh, exponent of uh, uh, of uh, the predictor. So such situation is less dominant for the case of uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, so it it's gives more flexibility in the uh, for the values between uh, 0 and 1 there is more possibility of spread of predictors which can be sometimes very useful so that's why we are uh, keeping such situation okay so this difference is uh, the, the manner, and that's why in certain application probit is used in most application logistic uh, uh, logit is used. And now it's time for some examples that we can um, show how it be behaves and happens in time. Are there any questions to the th theoretical part? Because now is a good moment, either on Teams or here. I'm writing it on chat just in case if someone is reading instead of listening. No, okay. 
So let's start with discrete, so-called discrete regression, or in uh, or in other words, using the Poisson uh, the, the Poisson regression, which is generally the idea that we can uh, get the sample uh, the values from the uh, we we generally get an idea that we can. Uh, Create a model that will give us the expression of actual integer uh, actual integer values. For the classical example, for example, from Gelman's book, is the uh, number of people that are being uh, stopped by police and being uh, being uh, being more uh, more detailed uh, detailly analyzed. It was used for to check for racial. Uh, profiling of police in these states, but it can also be used, for example, in political profiling in different countries. Uh, what we are doing here, uh, well, we, we work on the st standard Jupyter notebook. This one is, of course, uh, available to you. We are using my simple package that you have available. Uh, we are importing uh, common star model and our standard su uh, suspects of, of packages. Uh, we get some uh, plots to get everything rolling. We are working, of course, on the, uh, the uh, data analytics uh, um, environment, so the one that constitutes everything. I'm kind of afraid to run it, but maybe, maybe I'll try. Uh, and we'll see what will happen. Uh, generally, what we are uh, doing here is that uh, again we are importing standard standard stuff. We are adding paths so it will work. Uh, get figures, get the uh, ribbon plot function from my package. So everything happening without an issue. We have two functions for the. Uh, visualization reasons, and uh, those functions are used to, in order to visualize the histograms. Uh, in this case, it's a matter of the setting the bins properly. So, in you want to get bins in the, uh, you want to get bins that will have an integer in the middle of the plot. I've did that uh, in a different way in previous lectures when co I was correcting the. Uh, the slides. Generally, the idea is that you want the histograms to be placed in appropriate, uh, uh, the histogram bins to be centered on the integers, so they have to be have edges of min uh, of integer minus half and plus half to get you the, the right results. So that that's generally the idea uh, that uh, we convert the histograms uh, of certain functions. Uh, in the, here in into the proper value. This is something that we can compare to uh, the plot PPC function from Arvis that uses kernel density estimators. We are using here histograms. So instead of uh, computing the kernel density estimator for each of the generated samples, we will be comparing the histo identical histograms for them, at least with identical bins, and we will be comparing those. So we get instead of getting the Kernel as the estimator of the uh, the entire generated sample, we get the histogram of those generated samples, and uh, the second function is just uh, slight modifications in order to uh, get those histogram better for uh, better for plotting. Uh, we are using certain uh, set that you have provide uh, you are given in the uh, you are given uh, in the repository and this data set is actually 1000 measurements of free variables with uh, uh, the integer numbers of the uh, the integer numbers of successes happening in the uh, for example in this case we are not focusing on the application we are more on the abstract use so uh, in case of more application then we would have to consider what we are doing precisely so, as we can see, mean and standard deviation are of course not in integers, but quantiles are of course are. So median is given uh, given here, and our predictors are uh, continuous numbers, uh, which have some uh, some spreads of, in case of 
x3 is from minus 1 to plus 1 in case of x2 is around 0 and 1 and in case of x1 is again from minus 1 to 1. So we have the uh, we have the necessary information. So Uh, generally, this is our information about our, our data set. So we have, uh, we can use that data set to create a model, uh, a model for our, uh, our issues. We'll be using the uh, appropriate model from, okay, we'll be using this model from the, uh, instead we'll be using the uh, model that is you, uh, also available to you. Uh, we will just display it here and we will instantiate it with command stand model. Uh, what is an issue that actually uh, it was already corrected, it is pathed in new, uh, a new uh, command stand by distribution, uh, but like in a new version, but uh, on the developer version, it's not in public yet. Uh, there was a bug that uh, if your path to a folder contains blank spaces, then uh, you have to recompile every time the uh, the models. And our models is a bit, again a bit more complicated uh, in this case because uh, of course it was error something 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 compilation failed. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, so probably I won't be running those co codes anymore. Okay, what is the issue here? Foo, 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 foo. Interesting. Uh, it was working not, uh, not so far ago, but now I'm not sure why it's not working anymore. Uh, nevertheless, all the figures are being made, so I just won't be recompiling it now. Uh, probably something is on my side, not on the uh, the code, because as I, as I said, the code was working. Repository is probably correct. Uh, probably something with those temporary files that is not working, but uh, no idea what's what's going on here. Either way, what is our model? Our model is the uh, our model is uh, a Poisson regression model. We uh, actually it's a generated. Uh, we have a generated. Oh, something with the Xcode is not working. Uh, generally, uh, so it's a max issue. Uh, what we have here, we want to simulate full observation from the current values of parameters. We won't having the parameters by, by itself. We will just be uh, creating. We will be providing our model with coverage and observations. And uh, so, how many observations we want? We will create a, co uh, a design matrix. We provide it with prior standard deviation, and uh, because we will need it in a moment, we create so-called uh, rep vectors. This is useful in order to avoid using loops. We just transform data calls functions that create vectors of ones, which will be able to generate appropriate normal values. We assign normal prior for beta, normal prior for alpha, with selected sigma here, and our model is of course x times vector of beta, so number of uh, covariates with elements of beta multiplied by uh, ones, appropriate ones with the uh, with the alpha. So here we have a number of covariates, here, here we have the number of measurements, so we're just vectorizing the code and having the vector of lambdas for each of those lambdas, so each lambda is corresponds to one combination, linear combination of predictors, we get the uh, we get the uh, the model of uh, 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 get, the, get the Poisson, uh, Poisson model. So, uh, avoiding the uh, the issues, uh, which again I think are Mac related, and I haven't seen them 
I've, I've do, done it last week and everything was working, so I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, either way, maybe some kind of update was skipped or was done and something something broke. So, we are uh, using our model with the with our predictors. So we created data, uh, data the dictionary of data consisting of three predictors, 1000 of measurements, uh, with uh, table of predictors extracted from the uh, and we select as a given value of sigma, in this case sigma equal 10, which might be big or small depending on. This is the spread of our predictors. In case of normal distributions, uh, of uh, normal linear regressions, we often use the uh, 0, 10 sigma, uh, uh, 0, 10 normal distribution as a default prior, that will just regularizing the parameters to reasonable ranges. Here, we try to, same, we call everything as needed here, and we get the, uh, and we get the uh, issue uh, in the, uh, and, we, and we sample it using the uh, fixed parameters variance, so no parameters, we just sample values. Uh, and generally, we don't see anything wrong happening in our, uh, our diagnostics. However, and this is one negative part of using command stun, uh, of using command stun, is that in case of uh, in case of our uh, models, there will be there were some problems, and those problems come from the. Unless, of course, I don't have it here. I might not have it here. Uh, the problem is that when we look into the log files, which we can we get to if we look into the uh, generated samples which contain a lot of not a numbers, we will see a lot of comments like this. It says us that log rate parameter is, two, for example, 2.5551, uh, but it must be less than 20.794. And we get a lot of such, com uh, uh, such lines. And each of those lines corresponds to one not a number in generated samples. So something is wrong with our realization. And What's going on? This is the generation. We are using the uh, Poisson long, uh, log RNG function here, and we'll be using Poisson log function later. So this is something here, which is the function that generally corresponds to Poisson of exponent of theta value. So this is what the link function that we discussed before. And what is the interpretation of this situation is that uh, why number of 20.794 is something that we should be interested in. Why this value is some kind of special. Uh, it's not especially special, but it corresponds to the situation where our uh, well, we can see what's going on when we exponentiate it. When it exponentiate it, we get a big number. This big number, 20, uh, exponent of 20.794, is a number like this. And this is so 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. It's a billion. A billion, billion is a big number. But Number as number, nothing special. However, if we take a base 2 logarithm of it, we get 30. Well, approximately 30. And 2 to 30 is a limit of integer 32. So this situation is problematic. Why? Because if we exceed this computation, we have an overflow error, something that you might uh, not seen since a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I am in. Yeah, okay. 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 So, generally, what we have here is that what makes the problem? We get two large values of our distribution. And those values come from unappropriately tuned priors. 
So we need to find what kind of value of sigma should be good on this transform scale, because on the linear scale 10 was okay, but in generally in GLMs we need to be careful, because the link function will squeeze everything. We'll squeeze everything and we get some problems. So, uh, in our case, we can choose different values of sigma, for example 2, and have predictors bounded to minus 1 plus 1, which is, uh, will get us general situation. Uh, in case of our data set, uh, we had at most 28 successes here. As you can see, it was the maximum value of uh, a maximum observed value from the Poisson distribution. So we need to uh, be, uh, get our, our probability distribution that will at least give us a chance of getting as much uh, numbers. So in we choose if we choose sigma equal two, there's around one uh, percent probability with all maximum predictors that uh, we will get the, la uh, the lambda equals to 8. Nie możesz tutaj oglądać, musisz iść na, oglądać na laptopie, ok? Bo nie chcę coś pracuje. Mówiłem, że ja tutaj pracuję, więc idź tam. Ok. Uh, so, what's coming here? We had three predictors and we have the intercept. If we get sigma root 2, then we get these uh, the numbers or uh, uh, the numbers like here, assuming our maximum predictors. So we get those uh, those values here. It's uh, so get setting such values get us the uh, oh it's actually actually it's not one percent more percent. Sorry, it's my my mistake. It's not equals to eight, uh, but it's equal to much more because it will be four. So four times three twelve plus uh, plus 4, it will be 16. That was my mistake, because again, it's 1%, there was normal distribution, so we get something as extreme uh, as uh, 4 on 1%, because 2 sigma. So, 2 sigma times uh, times 4, so we get something like uh, something like. So, it's, of course, it, this is very uh, extreme situation, but this corresponds to this lambda, and we don't get a lambda too big for our situation. So that, that lambda dot theta, and theta corresponds to the average large lambda. So in case of here was 8, it will be 16 actually, so we get upper bound of a lot here. Uh, so, but again, it's only a situation when we get our results uh, too, too large for our stomach, and of course for each of those, we would be uh, all, all of those samples would, would coincide in the same time, so it's a bit more complicated computation. Uh, to get our lambda, we get the upper value. So if we would get the uh, smaller, if we get a sigma of one, I think we would get much more conservative results. Uh, again, I cannot verify it at this moment because of some issue that I was unaware of. That happens in the last few days. Uh, so let's go. Let's go back to the uh, uh, to the issue. Generally, corresponding, if we wanted upper bound of lambda equals to eight, we would need to get the uh, we would get uh, a bound of y equals to three uh, three thousand uh, one hundred forty four. And again, this is at least a bit reasonable value. So. Let's go back to prior predictions with using different sigma, so setting sigma equal to 2. And from that we get the distributions of our parameters. So sampling from parameters we get the, of course, uh, beta generally consistent with this 0 plus uh, 2 uh, distribution, because at most they will be between 2 sigma and of two three sigma and we get here the uh, we get here the, our alphas here so uh, all those parameters look reasonably similar because they come from the same priors and uh, 
our maximal obtained uh, lambda from combination of predictors and those samples was around 5. This is something that we got from our computation. Because remember, our model, ignore the error messages, uh, our model generates lambda here. So we create lambda, for each of samples, uh, we create vector of lambdas and maximal lambda for our predictor set was around 5. So, we can now see how our samples behave. So, having relatively limited uh, lambdas, we see that our number of counts. So, this is what we uh, did here. We sampled from our distribution a set of 1000 y's corresponding to the given predictors. And for those, we computed the histogram of integers that we've obtained. Those histograms get us the. So we are not analyzing the uh, verification of predictors. We see how the how well we've captured the distribution of all the results. So this might be a bit confusing for you. We are not looking at the moment at standard plots of regression that we compare predictors to the values. We are focusing generally on the results that we get because if our model well represents the data, our data. Uh, our samples from this model should be similar to the data obtained. Because those data are integers and they are governed by a set of uh, predictors, we should get a generally some kind of histograms of those integers that would make be kind of similar to our results. Because we get a histogram for each of those 1000 samples uh, and, uh, generated by our Monte Carlo simulation, which is here, right, for each of those, then our distribution, we can then average those histograms using the ribbon plus. So we compare all the, uh, we compute quantiles of all. This is the median histogram and get hist number of counts for each of these fields. And as a comparison, we have the original histogram of, uh, of our data. So the histogram of our data. So what is this here? Well, at least our prior predicted distribution does is not absurd. So the samples that we get from, uh, got from our distribution is not uh, does not generate values that are much exceeding values. We have, however, a more tendency to negative values. So certainly there is some kind of will be some kind of positive correlation in the, in the coefficients in order to get more the more of the samples. So. Uh, we create our model. Model again is very similar. We provide with almost the same data, but instead, outside of covariate decision matrix, we also we don't provide the sigma because we will be inferring the sigma. But oh no, we are not inferring. We're providing it uh, directly, but uh, we will be providing with the data. Again, for vectorization purposes, we are adding the de creating derivative vector function. Uh, the uh, derivative vector function to create uh, n-dimensional vector of ones. And we have m beta coefficients, so we have slopes for our linear uh, pr uh, linear predictors, and we have the we have the model of the, uh, uh, the uh, we have we have a parameter of intercept. So all those are real numbers. This will be a vector. These are the just numbers. Our prior model consists of again normal distribution with sigma of two, which we discussed before, and our observational model. Which is the uh, which is the uh, Poisson log distribution, which we generally you are using the these things like here. So you are using Poisson log. We provide x times beta plus alpha, and we will simulate the full observation again using the parameters estimator. So for each uh, each of, uh, function of, of here, we get the uh, the results uh, uh, from our distribution. So we will be some for each sample. We will get the pair, uh, the combination of three slopes and one alpha, and we use it to generate a full set of uh, of samples corresponding to our design matrix. And in order to do so, we again again use created data sets. Which you... 
za chwilę, synku. Teraz jestem za wielki. Czemu? Bo pracuję. Czemu? No bo taką mam pracę. Czemu? No bo tak już wszystko. Ok, sorry for the interlude, yeah. but that's the problem with children, uh, children at work. Uh, so, we create our data set. We sample from this data set. Uh, and uh, no, some of the data we sample, uh, we create a performance mode color simulation for our model in order to, est to infer the parameters of our model. We get those parameters from the. Uh, we get those parameters from our uh, standard, uh, our fit and. Excuse me for a moment. I will yeah. be back back in a moment. Okay, sorry for the interruption, but again, I'm alone with children and that makes matters more difficult. Uh, either way, uh, so what we did here, we've perform uh, the, we performed the inference of our data set uh, and using our, uh, and we visualize this model, so we get the parameters for our beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 and alpha. So we get those values of numbers. As you can see, uh, now, now they are on different uh, di different scales. Beta three is negative. Beta two is positive. Beta three is again positive here, and the intercept is well uh, constrained around two. So it's positive and relatively large to others. And again, we can use this. Histogram model. And there is much similarity. The model is similar to our uh, our data set. This similarity, however, has some systematic differences. As you can see, our histogram is here. So our 90, uh, our, our samples are uh, genetic and 90% uh, of our samples are either above or below our data. So there is similarity, but it still is not as good as it should be. So what can we do? The problem is that Poisson distribution uh, gives us the, it has this property that its mean and standard deviation are equal, which introduces certain uh, regularity in this distribution, but it also constrains the shape of distribution and this is something called dispersion. And in case of discrete regression, dispersion is, uh, is a problem that 
Poisson distribution by itself is not dispersed. However, we can use something called negative binomial distribution. Negative binomial distribution is a variant of binomial distribution with an additional parameter, which can be used to represent the dispersion or, which, or otherwise concentration, which is the inverse of dispersion, depending on which parameterization we want to use. You can see details in Michael Betancourt's uh, probability densities uh, case study. And generally we have the probability distribution that generates us the sequence of integer, uh, the, uh, an integer number of successors. But in the case of Poisson distribution, we have the uh, we have mean and variance equal. In case of uh, negative binomial distribution, when dispersion is equal to zero, we recover Poisson distribution. If dispersion is greater than zero, then we have more variance. And uh, so we can generalize from the uh, discrete uh, regression from Poisson regression, because starting with a point of, uh, uh, of uh, zero dispersion, we can get into the, uh, into the more dispersed distribution. So, what, uh, we are modifying our model by adding additional over dispersion parameter. We are uh, transforming that parameter in order to get the, uh, from the over dispersion parameter go to the dispersion parameter. Uh, dispersion parameter. So we get the uh, our model with a prior. For the uh, for theta, we are using the uh, in the, uh, for our dispersion parameter, we are providing it with the exponential distribution, and we are doing that. All, we are doing all this entire situation because. We have negative binomial distribution with an uh, phi, not psi parameter, or inverse uh, inverse phi. So inverse phi is much more inter is interpretable because it's equal to zero is uh, uh, okay. And assuming it can be equal to zero, we get this uh, our exponential distribution that gives a zero non-negative probability or non-zero probability. And using that, we are generally having a probability distribution that behaves similarly to a Poisson distribution, but with the uh, with the uh, possibility of dispersion. And again, we're simulating the values. We are doing the same stuff as always. We are generating our samples. Uh, we are checking those samples. Everything works okay. Uh, and we can generate our plots. So plots are generally are very similar. We get very similar values of predictors, which is okay because our model generally rather well corresponds even in Poisson distribution. However, our parameter psi, which is the inverse phi, so the association we show that there is some dispersion, not very big, but certainly not zero, somewhere around 0 0.08. So it's slightly disturbed, uh, dispersed distribution. And in such situation, Again, doing our plotting, we can see that we have our distribution that is much more fitting to our uh, our data set. There are maybe slight differences, but reasonable. Our histograms are consistent with our data set. So, in general, as linear models, we could use combination of predictors in order to uh, create kind of linear model that uses our predictors to estimate values of interest. And to get that, we have the, uh, we have the possibility of, uh, of transforming uh, that to get the, for example, integer values. Integer values, standard candidate Poisson distribution, but it's not only option. The uh, negative binomial distribution allows us more flexibility and it fits our data set better, so we get the uh, possibility of a better representation of our data set. And I will finish it here. We have another example of logistic regression, but we have only 12 minutes till the end. And uh, 
I will have problems with, uh, like, I won't be able to finish it on time. So thank you very much and thank you for listening. We'll continue it next week.